I'm going to show you how to make any cutout file or any type of, really any type of file into an ornament like this. So basically how to create this offset with a little hole in the top so that you can make any type of ornament, whether it be for Christmas or other holidays, and you can do this with any file. So I admit that the reason I even wanted to make this video in the first place is because I'm working on this little bundle file here where you can kind of mix and match for any holiday. So if you want to make a little hot cocoa for Valentine's Day, we've got that. We've got the marshmallow version. And I didn't want to include multiple different offset files as well as all of this other stuff. So I'm going to teach you how to do this yourself. And I think that it's a great opportunity if you don't know how to do this that it kind of opens up your opportunities because maybe you want to make something that hangs off of an Easter basket and you just want a daisy file. So, you know, this is something that can be really easy to do. So I'm just gonna quickly give you a rundown of how you can do this. And if you want to buy my file, then I will link this in the description. And maybe you're here because you already bought this file and you wanna know how to do this. Um, or it's honestly really easy, so you might already know how to do this, but at the end of the video, I'm actually going to show you some tricks to how you can kind of mix and match with the different stuff on here if you wanted to and kind of create your own type of design as well. So I'm just going to use this little marshmallow with the candy canes here, and I'm going to show you how to make the offset on this mug. So I want to make sure that it's nice and lined up, which all of these line up perfectly with the top of the mug so when you cut them separately they will match up and then to make your little offset if you want to turn it into an ornament you're just going to select this and i'm in lightburn um, you can do this in any laser program you just need to be able to do an offset so you should be able to have this and i know for a fact you can do it in silhouette studio and i I'm almost certain, I believe you can do it in X Tools program, but you just have to be able to know how to do the offset. So I like to do usually this 0.135, um, usually that's perfect. So you can see that it's kind of, well, I didn't need to select the heart. So let's just go ahead and select just my coffee mug, not the heart. And then we go to the offset. And again, this is what's good for me. You can, you know, turn it to whatever you want. You can adjust it however you want. Maybe this is too wide for you, but I'm gonna stick with that. And then when you click on it, this is your offset. So I like to keep the inside of the mug there. So it looks like this once it's cut out. So now we need to create our little hanging hole. So I just create circles, which if you don't know how to create a circle, you just hold on the shift key and whoops make your circle and I like to make them generally somewhere between like a quarter of an inch and a half an inch. So I think I have this one here sized to like 0.38. Um, that to me is a good size. So again, I like to keep them, you know, between like a quarter of an inch and an eighth of an inch, or I mean, I'm sorry, a quarter of an inch and a half an inch. Um, and then the middle of the circle kind of depends on what you're planning on using, you know, like this one. I've got this ribbon, so it's got to be a relatively big hole, but you know, if you're using twine, you might want to make the inside of your circle a little bit smaller. But in Lightburn specifically, as you can see how my whole, my circles here are not centered, you just select them and then up here, this will automatically center your design for you. So then we're going to break it down here and we want to place this in the middle because if it's not completely centered, it's going to want to hang in a specific direction. So like you don't want to put your um, hole up here because it's going to want to kind of tilt when it's hanging. And then same with some of these whipped cream ones. You know, when I do these, you can't always place it right directly in the middle. You can see how this one over here, I've got it in kind of a weird spot. I'm actually not certain if I'm happy with how this looks just yet. But if I were to put the circle up here on top of my whipped cream, then it's going to probably lean in this direction because the leaves and the handle are going to create all that extra weight. So the way that I find the middle of my mug design here is I create a box 
which I've already got one made up here, but you just make um, it the same way, you know, with the circle. Um, and then I box my shape in like all the way to the line so that it's basically touching. And then I go up to this same centering device here. And then I know that that is directly centered in my design. And then I will move my circle up. So you can see it's kind of in an awkward place here. You've got some wiggle room where, you know, it's not going to lean. So I will kind of move that over a little bit. But here you can see, you know, this hangs pretty much perfectly and it doesn't look awkward or anything like that. So that is the way that I find the center. And then again, you just need to be able to weld it together. And just like that, you've got your offset. Now, one thing I do want to mention is maybe you want this to be the perfect circle. You just want to weld the outside, not the center. And then you've got a perfectly round circle. I can't remember what I did for this one. Oh, this one, I actually cut it into the shape like I had it there the first time. So if you want to do it like that, then you want to select your middle circle and then it'll kind of cut right into your design or you can do it so that it's just the outer portion and then it leaves you with that perfectly round hole. So that's just up to you on how you want it to look. So I will go ahead and do another one of these. So whoops, well, we'll move that out of the way, but I actually need my mug design back. And then we'll go ahead and do the candy cane, for example. So we're just going to want to line this up perfectly and then whoops, select it, add your offset. And again, Lightburn just kind of defaults to the last one that you use. So I'm going to hit OK. And then now I don't have a circle. So actually what I do is once I kind of found the circle that I like, I will often kind of just use that as a base, which I remember I had said it was like 0 0.38, I think it was like 0.3835 or something like that. So, you know, somewhere in that general area. And I will usually just steal my circle from my other one. You could also do an inner offset for the circle too. So basically the same way that we would create the offset, um, but instead do inner. And then, you know, you kind of have to play with what looks good. Oh, that looks a little bit too big. That looks a little too small. You know, just kind of play around with it. So when you do the offset, you know that it's already perfectly centered and that we want this to be the same color. So again, it's kind of your instinct. You kind of go like right at the top here, but you know, with this candy cane, we might be leaning a little bit. So I'm gonna grab my same box here and then find my center of my design that way. And I know that there are different ways that you can do this. This is just kind of how I started doing it over the holidays when I was making a bunch of ornaments and that's what worked well for me. And again, if it's in a weird spot, you've got a little bit of wiggle room, you know, it doesn't have to be perfectly in the center, but this gives you that whole idea. So again, I'm just gonna weld this over here and you know, that looks kind of weird. So I would probably play around with it a little bit more so that I don't just have this weird, like awkward circle. But once you have your ribbons and stuff on there, they don't look, weird like they look you know on the uh, design like here with my little gnome um it's kind of in a weird spot but once it's all i'm gonna put a bow on it and everything and once it's all finished up you know it's it's not gonna be a big deal so that's how you do that so if you didn't know how to turn your design into an ornament um that's an easy way to do it. And again, you can do this with any type of cut file. So like this is a daisy design I have here. I think it would be super cute on an Easter basket with like an orn or a name over it. So in a circumstance like this, where I've got all this inside pieces, I will turn them a different color and ungroup it. And then I will turn off my other layers. And I don't know why, oops, I didn't turn them off. That's I'm like, what is going on here? Sorry, so then, and then I will just go ahead and delete those out. So now I've got this little offset around my daisy. I could do the same thing with the circle and add, you know, a little circle at the top. And I think this would be so cute with like a script name over it as a Easter basket design. And again, this, 
AZ file is on my website as well, but I just think that would be really cute for the kids for Easter. And I know it's probably hard to see what it would look like now, but if you wanted to cut this out and paint it white and yellow and then put their name over it, um, I think that would be cute. So this just knowing how to do this really kind of opens up your options for different files. Maybe you can't, maybe you had an idea for Easter in mind and you can find what you're looking for, but now you have the ability to do it yourself. And I think a lot of designer makers, laser makers or laser owners kind of pass on certain designs if they're not immediately ready to be made the way that they want. But this kind of opens up other opportunities for you. Now, I'm gonna delete this because again, I said I wanted to play around with it more. I wanna show you some tricks here. So again, this is gonna be directly related to this file here. So actually, I'm gonna leave that on there. So, this is a little bundle that I have, so you get everything that you see here, not the daisy, sorry, that was just a different example, but you get, you know, all the different fall options, you've got Christmas, you've got Valentine's Day, and it's going to come with your mug, and then all of the different toppings, basically. So, what I wanted to show you is let's say you like the candy cane, but like you also kind of like how this candy cane also has the cinnamon stick. So what you can do is copy, so we're gonna ungroup this because we only want one. And we are gonna copy and paste it and bring it over here and then we can cut out our cinnamon stick with the candy cane and look how cute that would look. The only problem is this isn't lining up perfectly. You don't really want this cutting into your whipped cream and all that. So this is a really easy fix. You can come over here and this is how you edit the nodes. And now this is something I'm not familiar with how to do in other programs. Um, I'm sure there's different ways to edit things, but this is how you, I do it in Lightburn. And I can just kind of quickly adjust these lines here so that we can add the little cinnamon stick with the candy cane. And just like that, we've got this new design. And you know, you can kind of do it with any of these too. Um, I was thinking that like for these, for the Halloween file, um, like this would be really cute orange and white, but maybe we wanna add like, maybe we want that with the leaf instead. So, you know what, I'm gonna make a copy of this because I don't wanna lose it. But let's say we don't want the cinnamon stick here and we want to use, oh, I've got one of my blue lines here. And so let's say we want this little candy cane stick instead. So we're going to steal it from this one here and put it over here. And that's looking a little weird. So we're going to want to, you know, play with it, resize it. And, you know, we can kind of set it up in here kind of where we want it and then you know like that would be really cute so we could just come over here edit the nodes and just to um let you know in order to edit the nodes uh your file has to be ungrouped so make sure that you ungroup that if it's not if it's not popping up it's um probably because it's grouped um and you know we just make like super quick little adjustment there and now we've got a little candy cane with the leaf instead. So I just wanted to mention that because my goal with this file was for it to be, you know, really versatile. You can mix and match and whatnot. Gonna pop in here and interrupt myself because since making this file, I actually decided to add 4th of July and Easter to the bundle. And I thought of a couple more things that I wanted to show you specific to this file so that again, you can just make the most out of it. Okay, just really quick, a couple of things and then I'm going to wrap this up. So the ghost here, his arms and pumpkin are designed to be stacked on top. However, you can definitely cut it as one flat layer. I just wanted to point this out because I find it's easier to just stack them rather than deal with the cutouts. Um, the pumpkin here, I had it as a score line, but this line is separate in case you want to score it or you can cut the stem separately just because the stem is so small, it can be hard to keep track of, but I definitely found it easier to shape the individual pieces with it cut separately. Um, the marshmallows, these are all individual lines and you might be wondering why, and that is because in case you wanna change these 
to score lines and keep the marshmallows connected. I did so many of these around Christmas. This was how I decided. I like to cut it out. I like to keep these two marshmallows connected because this one is kind of little, hard to keep track of. So this is what I found worked for me, but I left them as individual lines so that you can choose what works best for you. Um, the daisy, also same thing as the ghost. I found it easier to stack the middle piece on top and it also gives it some cute dimension. Um, the whipped cream, same thing as the marshmallows. You can decide if you want to change these lines to score or not. Um, if you're shaking, you might find it easier to round them over if they're individual pieces. And then the last thing I wanted to mention is the candy canes. So I find it easier to cut out the candy canes without cutting the individual pieces. And then I shape them with my rotary tool, round them over and everything. And then I stick them back in the laser and then I cut the lines so that they're in separate pieces after being shaped. And then I paint them their separate colors. Again, I did a ton of candy canes around Christmas time. This is what I found worked for me, but you could totally just change the lines to score and do it that way. You could put the offset around them. Well, not that much of an offset, you know, and engrave the lines if you wanted. I think that would work great. You could do like a paint fill. Um, you know, maybe I'll try that someday because I'm not going to lie, the candy canes can be quite a bit of work. But I just wanted to mention those last couple of things, and I think that this wraps it up. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you found this helpful. I will be sure to link the file below as well as my website where you can find all of my digital files. And I'm going to go ahead and get these finished up, so be sure to follow my other socials so you see how they turn out. And I can't wait to see you guys make these too.